Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. This is Fair Value Ponder, and today we are taking a look at Apple Incorporated, ticker AAPL. Warren Buffett recently sold half of his position, and we haven't looked at it in 10 months. So it's about time to take a look and see why is he selling. I mean, he is kind of the king of value investing in many people's eyes. And uh, what a decent price to get in, what some reasonable returns are for this stock. So let's get right into it. Coming up with a fair value of $167, discounted cash flows of about $200, current value $217. So definitely overvalued, in my opinion. It has been at a reasonable price at some point in the last year, but right now it's not a reasonable price. And the high, $237, was very high. In fact, if you got in at around the fair value, uh, you'd be sitting on 42% profit, which is around the point where, as a value investor, we would take profit. So completely reasonable to be getting out of this stock at, at this point. Even today, kind of reasonable to get in, to get out of it. It's about 10% over the highest that I would possibly consider paying for it. Uh, absolutely no reason to be paying over $200 for this thing with what it's giving you. And we'll get into all of that. Earnings yield, 3.6%. So we'd be looking for earnings per share of 10.88, and we are not getting that. This year, analysts are expecting 6.7. Next year, 7.5. So we still are a ways away from that. If it continues to grow at this rate, uh, it is exceptionally overvalued on an earnings front because we wouldn't be looking at that for another... So actually... We are not going to see a reasonable value. It, it's trading at valuations based on their earnings six to seven years out. So that's probably one of the most overvalued companies that we've taken a look at here. Now, the cash flows are incredible. That's why we see such a strong discounted cash flow value here. And that is very important, probably one of the most important metrics for a company. But <clears throat> I don't like what they're doing with the cash flows here. And I don't see why Buffett would be invested in this stock because he's big on proper allocation of cash flows and actually consulted with Apple on what to do with some of their excess cash flows. Dividend yield, just shy of 0.5, usually around 0.65. Payout ratio, huge room to grow this dividend, 15.42%. Uh, so we would definitely say that that is very low. I uh, prefer to see that closer to 0.5 or closer to 50 percent roe super super high which is usually a red flag it means that their debt is super high which is skewing their equity and that's exactly what we're seeing here uh, the last time i reviewed this stock i said i hate them because their balance sheet is awful and i'm still seeing a awful balance sheet here they have really good cash flows they need to work on that debt ROI, 25%. ROA, 27.5%. Both of those are very good. Very good numbers. Uh, we already touched on the debt to equity. Way too high. Again, as I always say, we want that under one, ideally. At least trending down at a minimum. And we can take a look at that. Um, it's kind of been all over the place. From four to four and a half to almost six to 4.7. If they continue on their current trend, then they'll be at 4.65 this next year. So not really any sort of a change from where they currently sit. Gross margins, pretty strong. I was kind of expecting better for such a brand name. 44% uh, with 41 as their average, almost 42. And net, they came in higher than usual, 25.3. And on average, they're 24.4. And now we get into some analyst projections, some historical, or some recent performance, and come up with our thesis. And what I'm seeing here is clearly a very large company that's growing slowly, but they are growing. And... Uh, the market 
seems to be treating them like a tech growth stock, and they clearly are not one based on what we're seeing here. I mean, analyst projections for the next two years are revenue growth of 4.8%. Now, don't get me wrong. That's a big number with where they're starting from, all the way up to almost $422 billion. But as a shareholder, we care about our portion of the business, and the revenue that it's earning is only growing 4.88% over the next two years, compounding over the next two years. And over the next year, it's only 1.8, which is under inflation. In fact, with recent numbers, that two-year number is about in line with inflation. So um, not really the sort of growth that we like to see from a company. So 3.4 is what we're putting down for the thesis. Kind of the midpoint between what analysts are projecting for the next two years and we will go from there. We can come up with something better later on. Share count, they are buying back shares in quite a bit at that, but they are at elevated prices. So I wouldn't expect them to buy back too much. As I said, they've got strong cash flows to be buying back shares, issuing a dividend, creating new products, whatever it would be. Uh, they don't seem to be the best at any of those. Payout ratio is not the best. I I wouldn't be buying back shares at the current price. It's it's overvalued. Uh, there's a certain time that it should be done and not just at whatever point. But that is one of the best uh, share buybacks that we've seen from a company. Assets are very flat. We're just going to keep them flat. Liabilities, they're slowly paying them down. They grew them a bit over the last two years, but had a decent... Uh, drop in the last year of 3.9%. So we're just going to go with one, something small. Dividend growth of 4%. They seem to be raising it pretty consistently, about seven cents per year, it looks like. And that would take them up to $1.20 in the next five years. And that is a dividend yield on cost if you're buying at today's price of 0.6. You look at that yield on cost and their average dividend yield on this stock, and it's just a no-brainer that it's overvalued. And uh, I mean, Buffett's clearly seen the same things that I'm seeing here. I'm not saying it's an awful company. I mean, it's one of those slow-growing giant companies, but they have the cash flows to support it being a reasonable investment given the right price. And the right price is 30, 40% lower than it where it currently sits. And then margins, we're gonna hold flat. They did come in above average this last year. And I, I wouldn't expect too much wiggle room there. But all that comes out to annual growth in the fair value of 4.9%. After you factor in the dividend, we're talking 5.3%. So just your average return, you're underperforming the market by 3 to 5%, just about. Meaning for the general investor, I don't think that this is a stock that's worthy of holding in a portfolio. But if you are a cash flow focused investor, it has some potential. A growth investor, no. The only person that I feel like this stock is reasonable to hold in their portfolio is someone focused strictly on cash flows and, and returns. ROI and ROA are good here, but you have to be turning a blind eye to a lot of other things like the debt to equity and the super high earnings to be buying and holding at today's prices. And we can take a quick look at some of these prices graphed out, and we see some good growth. Uh, looks like the balance sheet holds pretty steady way down here, not bringing really any value to the company. I feel like that's the biggest thing holding them back. Uh, the fair value of the stock seems to be tied pretty closely to the cash flows here. And that's what I was saying is this is a stock for cash flow investors. But ever since 
2021, it's kind of been riding underneath. And it looks like that gap shrank. And this next year, we might see a bit of a flip where the fair value is actually higher than the cash flows being driven upwards by the earnings. Earnings are next up with a nice chart here, flattened out in 2022 to 2023, and analysts are projecting some pretty decent growth going forward for those. And then the actual share price is completely off on its own. Uh, definitely not what we like to see when we look at stocks. Uh, we'd like to see that thing somewhere down closer in here. Uh, so now we can come up with a best case scenario. This is where we put in the higher end of what we're what we've seen or are expecting. Analysts are expecting that 4.88, so we'll go with that. Uh, share count if they buy back two and a half percent. Cash flow growth again. Let's just try and keep it in line with the revenues, so that way they hold at their cash flow yield. Assets flats fair, but 0.15 is the highest that we've seen out of them. And then liabilities, we want this to be the lowest number. A dividend, let's say 5% now. Margin, just 1%. So this would be more of a best case scenario. And still, you're underperforming the market by 2 to 5%. Or no. You're underperforming the market by like 1% to 3%. So not nearly as bad. Buying at today's prices, you're essentially buying at prices of three to four years out. To some people, that's a fair multiple. But you're going to be underperforming the market by about 23%. Unless in three years, it's still trading at a multiple of three years out. In which case, I mean, you're still going to be underperforming the market. Because you're talking 12% and 5 you're probably looking at 10 to 11 percent underperformance even in that case and then at five years out you're looking at underperforming the market by 35 percent <throat> and that's the best case scenario that i can come up with this stock so i definitely see why buffett sold honestly i don't know why he held for so long probably just because they do have super strong cash flows and they are, or they were for a while, the largest company in the world. And there's just a lot of brand power to that alone. Uh, being a part of all those indices brings a pretty big boost to your stock. <clears throat> but that's what we're looking at for this one. So I want to thank guys for watching. Please like, enjoy the video, comment what other stocks we should take a look at, and subscribe so you can stay up to date with everything. And I'll catch you next time.